Hey, what's going on, everyone? Um, this is going to be my review for Pro Wrestling Noah's Great Voyage 2011. Um, I think this this is the first uh, full Noah show that I've partly watched since I'd say last summer, and uh, ever since then it's been kind of watching scattered matches. And uh, I heard this was a pretty good show, so I finally decided to watch a full Noah show uh, yet again. Um, and overall, it was a pretty good show. Um, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, before I get into the review of the show, though, um, I know I'm a little late to the party, but um, I'd like to give props to Eddie Edwards win the Ring of Honor title. Um, I think it's great. Uh, I think it was uh, a good idea. It's uh, really refreshing. It's something that was needed in Ring of Honor. Um, definitely liven things up a little bit, you know, as far as the world title scene goes. Uh, that's no disrespect to Roderick. Um, I think he's a great wrestler, and I think he could have had a better run, but it didn't quite work out that well. Uh, maybe at some point, if he gets a second chance, it will uh, work out better for him than it did the first time. Um, yeah, so it's great that Eddie Edwards uh, won the belt, uh, bringing the home back to Boston, uh, bringing the belt, yeah, sorry, bringing the belt back home to Beantown. That's fucking sick. Um, and also, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, YouTuber. Uh, I can't quite remember his name. It was Putin Hoot or Poop Shoot or a Poop Shoot or a Poop Tube or something. Uh, whatever. Uh, basically told me I suck today. I suck a lot. So, yeah, basically I'd like to uh, wish Poop Shoot. Uh, actually, I'd like to thank him for his well wishes. Uh, much uh, appreciated, uh, little fucking bitch. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, it's time to get the, to the meat and potatoes. Stop rambling on and get to the meat and potatoes of this... Uh, video and that's the review for Great Voyage 2011. Uh, yeah, so uh, first match we have Marishima Takeshi taking on Hashi um, Makoto. Um, this wasn't really much of a wrestling match, but for what they did I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, basically as soon as the bell rung, uh, Marishima just gave a uh, sick lariat to Hashi when, uh, for the pin and almost got the pinfall. And um, the whole rest of the match, uh, ha Hashi was, I'm saying his name right, right? Yeah, Hashi was, uh, his lights were just so clocked from the lariat that, you know, he just kind of spent the rest of the match uh, just selling that, you know, he was wobbly, he was woozy, he was it really good. So the only thing he could muster up was trading um, strikes with Marishima. And uh, every time he got hit by uh, Marishima, he would... Uh, sell it really well, like, you know, he was just out of it, and uh, it didn't last long, but, you know, I thought it had an interesting narrative, um, and I enjoyed it for what it was. All right, next match, uh, we had uh, Saito Akatoshi taking on Inui Masao, I mean, with, he was uh, teaming up with Inui Masao, uh, versus Ishimori Taiji and Shiga Kentaro. Um, not that this was really a bad match, but it was just kind of there for the most part. Um, there were some interesting parts uh, with Saito and uh, Ishimori, but other than that, it was just kind of there. Not really too much to talk about. All right, uh, so next up we had uh, Disobey, uh, consisting of Muhammad Yone, Yoshinobu Kanamaro, Kenta, and Haranagi Genba. Uh, I wasn't aware until I saw the show that. Uh, Kenta had joined the uh, group, and he was, I, I'm guessing he was heel. And uh, they were taking on Kensuke, uh, the team of Kensuke Office, uh, Maha, uh, whoa, Kensuke, uh, Suzaki Kensuke, Okita Takashi, <coughs> Maihara Kento, and Kajiwara Satoshi. Uh, this was a pretty good this was an okay match. Uh, when it was starting to like pick up and speed up a little bit, um, Kenta took a chair and he hit uh, Muhammad Yoni with it and pretty much uh, gave the win to Kensuke office. Um, I'm not sure why he uh, and and then uh, him and the rest of his team uh, were beat you know beat him up. And um, I wasn't sure why, you know, he turned on Yone, because as far as I know, they just, this group just had, uh, started recently, or at least uh, Kenta just joined this group recently. Um, Kenta got on the mic and said something to him. Um, 
Uh, yeah, if anyone knows uh, the context of this story, uh, let me know. Um, so basically, yeah, that happened, and then were, they were the three of them were going to leave. Um, Yoni came and uh, tried to uh, fight them off, and they pretty much just beat them down and left them there. Um, Yoni didn't really sell the betrayal too well. Um, I think he could have done a lot more with it, you know, maybe shown a lot more anger, but, you know, what are you going to do? All right, so uh, next up we had, uh, where are we? Sorry, I mean this from a piece of paper. Uh, works for someone like me because I'm pretty forgetful at times. All right, okay, next up we had uh, Akiyama Jun taking on Yoshi Yutaka. Um, this, was a, this was an okay match. It wasn't too bad. Um, I thought it was interesting that uh, Akiyama Jun was uh, t- pretty much taking a one-side beatdown throughout most of the match. Um, Yoshi just was just had control over the whole match, and uh, at times when um, Akiyama Jun did have did have control of the match, uh, there was a couple times he tried to bust out the exploder, and he would, you know, eventually he tried until he got it. So yeah, that was that. It wasn't too bad. Um, it was a enjoyable little match. And next up, we had the GH, GHC Junior Heavyweight uh, Tag Team Match: uh, Mara Fuji Michi and Aoki Atsushi take on Ogawa, Yoshinari, and Ricky Marvin. And uh, this was a pretty good match. This is just exactly what I expected. Uh, a lot of action throughout, uh, relatively fast-paced. Um, yeah, all these guys look good. Um, and uh, I'm also a big fan of Mara Fuji, so pretty much any match that he's in gets uh, automatic bump in uh, my book. Um, yeah, this was very good. Um, exactly what I wanted out of it, and I was very satisfied with it. All right, next up we had the match of the night, GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship match, and it was um, Nakajima Katsuhiko taking on uh, Suzuki Kotaro. Why did I mess up his name? Yeah, Kotaro. Suzuki Kotaro. And uh, this was an incredible match. Uh, This was very hard-hitting. Nakajima was just relentless in his attack. And so was in uh, Suzuki. Uh, these guys just work very well together. And this is, uh, I believe this is their second match against each other over the last couple of years. And uh, this match was awesome. There was just a lot of high drama in it. And there was a couple times I really thought uh, Nakajima was going to take the belt. Very, very good match. Just, I don't know what else to say about it. You just have to see it. And that's all I can say. Very, very, very good match. Uh, one of the best matches of the year. Uh, if not the best match of the year so far, for sure. All right. Uh, next up, we had uh, GHC. The G. Whoa. All right, I'm all screwed up here right now. Next up, we had the GHC Heavyweight Tag Team Match: Asano Takuma and Takayama Yoshihiro taking on Shiozaki Go and Tanaguchi Shuei. Uh, this was a pretty good match, too. Um, I was a little burnt out at first uh, for the first few minutes of this match, you know, because of the previous match. Uh, but it was, this was a pretty good match, uh, you know, veterans against the younger guys. And um, the younger guys would not stay down easy for the veterans. Um, uh, they tried to take the fight to the veterans right from the start. Um, Yeah, so it was a very good match. Um, you know, I kind of feel bad for um, Takayama. He's kind of looking uh, really old and beat up, uh, especially lately. You know, his nose is all fucked up. His uh, face is all droopy. You know, he kind of looks sad. And, you know, kind of just like I don't know, want to give the guy a hug in the baby roof or something. You know, he kind of has that uh, thing going. Okay, and. Uh, Next up, we have the GHC Heavyweight uh, Championship match. Um, Giant Bernard taking on Shigeru Takashi. And uh, this was a pretty good match. Um, not quite as good as I was expecting, especially considering the video package that they showed before it, where um, there was a, they had a press conference for the match. And um, so at the end of the press conference, uh, Giant Bernard kicks Shigeru in the stomach and the power bombs through the table. So what I was kind of expecting, and 
for this match because um, Shakira came out and you know he had his lower body bandaged up. So I figured after getting thrown through a table and kind of getting beat up, I expected a little more of a dramatic narrative. Um, I was expecting a lot more like fighting spirit of Segura, uh, taking on uh, Giant Bernard, and uh, a lot more selling up the back and a lot more working on up the back, you know, because it was just like such an obvious target, but there wasn't too much attention to it. The way it kind of played out, uh, Giant Bernard kind of had control of most of the match, just keeping the match at his pace, which is fine, but I just, you know, figured how they got, you know, what they did to add to the match. I don't really think that the they really played on that too well. Uh, there was a little bit of song on the back and a little bit of working on the back, but not a whole lot. Um, I think one of the biggest things with, with Skr was do with selling uh, uh, the lower body, you know, this pain in the lower body. It was uh, one time he tried to try to suplex a uh, uh, giant Bernard, and Bernard fell on top of him. Um, there was a couple other things uh, similar to that, but uh, yeah, like I, I like I said, I felt like they didn't play off uh, that post um, press conference beatdown as well as they could have. But it was still a very entertaining match. Um, I was curious to see how Giant Bernard was gonna um, wrestle and you know how it was gonna be um, with him being in the Noah ring because he's been working in New Japan and while well, the styles are. You know, similar. The styles are similar. Um, you know, Noah's a lot hard hitting and stiffer in um, in New Japan. Um, it was pretty interesting uh, uh, lately in the last couple of years seeing uh, Giant Bernard wrestling out in Japan, especially where he came from. Uh, you know, his days uh, wrestling in WWE. Uh, you know, he was Prince Albert. He was just this big fucking hairy man, and uh, half the matches he tried to pierce people. Cause I guess that was his way of adding insult to injury. And also, he was the A-train, he'd come out, you know, they had the smoke coming out of his entrance, you know, kind of like the fucking train smokestack. And uh, he seems to really uh, found his niche uh, working out in Japan, um, especially teaming up with uh, Carl Machine Gun Anderson, who also came out for this match. Um, Bernard did get, a lot, did, a good, did get a good amount of heel heat from the crowd. Uh, he was getting boozed throughout. So... Yeah, overall, this was a pretty good show. Um, the guy, as far as rating the whole show goes, I'm probably going to have to go with a... I think I'll go with a B. And uh, I probably would have rated it a little higher, but uh, the undercard, while solid overall at times, I just kind of had the feeling of being there. And um, the, main, the main event match wasn't quite what I had hoped out of it considering the situation. But, yeah, overall, uh, Great Voyage 2011 is a very good show. Uh, I recommend uh, checking it out. And, uh, until next time, see you later.